Assalamu uh, alaikum. So inshallah today I'm giving revision on chapter 4 and inshallah successively I will give revision on chapter 5, chapter 6 and also chapter 7. Uh, so today inshallah I will be starting with chapter 4, revision on chapter 4, which is mainly related to the application of the first law of thermodynamic for a closed system. Uh, actually, closed system means actually this system does not allow for mass transfer, so the mass of this system is uh, considered to be constant, we don't have mass transfer in this case. Uh, but the question is how we can define actually the system is closed. When he tells you directly that we do have a closed system, so this means actually the system is closed. When he says we do have a system, so system means also a closed system. Or when we say we do have a rigid vessel, so in this course also the system is a closed system or rigid vessel, or we do have, let's say, rigid tank. All of this means the system is closed. Or when we do have a piston cylinder device containing a working fluid like gas or steam or any working fluid. So all of these actually terms mean the system is a closed system and we don't have mass transfer in this case. And we can apply the first law of thermodynamic for this closed system. I'm not here actually just to give details about from where, <coughs> from where the equation of the first law of thermodynamic is coming or has been reduced. Just I will give the equation. So Q minus work equal to delta U. <coughs> which is the first law of thermodynamic equation for a closed system. Delta U as the mass is constant, so equal to mass multiplied by specific internal energy U2 minus U1. U2 and U1 are to be calculated in kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Mass is the mass of the system in kilogram. And heat transfer and the work, each of them actually is to be calculated in kilojoule. So this is the form of the first law of thermodynamic for uh, for a closed system. We said how to define a closed system, then we can just apply the first law of thermodynamic for a closed system, Q minus work is equal to delta U. But let's consider actually each of this term, uh, each of those terms we will be considering, and just to define actually how we can calculate those terms. And this is actually the case for chapter 4. We have nothing more about chapter 4, so let's first of all consider the term of heat transfer, Q. This heat transfer, we have to apply the sign conversion if it is added to the system. So in this case, the sign of the heat transfer will be positive. If it is rejected or lost from the system, so in this case, it has to be substituted here by negative sign. Let's say heat transfer equal to 10 unit. So in this case, if it is rejected from the system or lost from the system, we have to substitute here by negative 10. Or the heat transfer may be equal to zero. In case of when we do have an adiabatic, adiabatic system, or in case of we do have insulated system or isolated system, also all of this means actually the heat transfer is equal to uh, equal to zero. Also, if this term heat transfer is not given or required, so if not given or required, so in this case also we can consider the term heat transfer equal to equal to zero. So those are the different cases for the term of heat transfer. If it is added to the system, it will be positive sign in this equation. Rejected will be negative sign. And if it is, if we said actually we do have a diabetic insulated system, isolated system, or if, if it is not given or required, all of this means actually the heat transfer will be taken as, uh, will be taken as zero. Right, this is regarding the first term and the first law of thermodynamic. Q minus work equal to delta U, which is the heat transfer. Type the second term is the work. This term is the work. This work may be actually as we can call it as other work, any other kind of work other than the boundary work. So this work may be other kind of work, like if we do have an electrical work, electrical uh, work, which is equal to electrical bar multiplied by delta T, electrical bar volt by ampere multiplied by delta T. So if you do have electrical heating coil or something, then the electrical bar in kilojoule, this is the work, in kilojoule equal to the electrical bar in kilowatt multiplied by delta T, which is VI multiplied by delta T. If we do have a paddle wheel or something, so in this case the work will equal to the shaft bar of this paddle wheel. So those are actually the other kind of work. In addition to this, we do have the boundary work. Boundary work is the work obtained when we do have 
one of the boundaries of the system is moving. When we do have, this is actually the case, when we do have a gas or any fluid inside a piston cylinder device, and this piston is moving either upward or downward. So in this case, we do have one of the boundaries is moving, and in this case, we have to calculate the boundary work. Boundary work is equal to integration of BDV of the system. So the boundary work equal to integration of BDV. Time we do have for this, we still we are working with this term on the first slope thermodynamic equation. We are calculating the work. Now let's consider the boundary work. This boundary work actually could be calculated, as you can see, is function of pressure and volume. So we have to get the relation between pressure and volume so that we can do this integration and calculate the boundary work. So this will be given, should be given for you. We do have some special cases to uh, calculate the boundary work. So the first case, when we do have isoparic process, isoparic process means the pressure is constant. Actually, he may not tell you directly in a problem or something that we do have isoparic process. But if he said we do have a piston cylinder device containing a fluid, and this piston is not connected to a shaft, it's free to move, just free to move. So when we add heat, actually, let's say we do have a gas heat here, when we do add heat, Adding heat, if this piston is not moving, so the pressure inside will be increasing due to actually the gases will be try to expand and the piston is fixed. So in this case, the pressure and temperature will be increasing. But if this piston is free to move, so in this case, uh, once we add heat, the gas will try to expand. The piston will actually allow for this expansion. So in this case, the pressure will be kept constant. So if we do have a piston that is free to move, so this means the pressure is pressure will be constant. And in this case, the boundary wall equal to integration of BDV pressure is constant I take it, I can take it out so it will equal to pressure multiplied by total volume V2 minus V1 this total volume is equal to mass multiplied by specific volume V2 minus V1 the specific volume is in meter cube per kilogram and the mass in kilograms this is the total volume so we have to take care either the total volume is given or a specific volume a specific volume we have to multiply by mass so we can calculate this work in kilojoules. This is the first case when we do have isoparic process. The pressure is the pressure is constant. We do have also some other special cases, including when we do have a polytropic process. In this case, we do have BV to the power n is constant. Also, we do have another special case when we do have an isothermal uh, isothermal process. Now, let's consider those processes. So the second special case when we do have a polytropic, a polytropic process.